Well, more university stuff. Oh. We've got uh, divided by race. What's been happening in Chicago, Rita? Oh, well, yes, they've. Uh, this is a college town near uh, Chicago, north of Chicago, and they've had fairly wide gaps in academic achievement between their different races, the black uh, students, Latino students and the white students. So uh, to overcome this, they've decided we're going to have uh, voluntary segregation. So they're going to segregate classrooms by race. It's not forced. But again, we are in the name of so-called diversity, progress, anti-racism, going Backwards, going back into sort of 1940s, 1950s mindsets. And instead of actually looking at, OK, what are the reasons why these particular student groups are underperforming? How can we get them to reach their potential? They go straight down this racial route and, and, and dividing people by race. Well, Rita, I'm just surprised to hear you say that Democrats might be in favour of segregation. Oh, wait, <laughs> they've always been the party of segregation. Oh, yes. But can I tell you about a crazy story here? Um, at Brown University, one of the wokest of the woke Ivy League universities. And I tell you what, you know, American college campuses these days, they've become bigger Hamas hideouts than Al-Shifa <laughs> Hospital. Um, <laughs> the president of the university was trying to give some whole speech about, you know, we're coming together and, you know, all of the anti-Semitism and Islamophobia and all of that, you know, the whole both sides routine. Yeah. And she had a line in her speech and she's giving the speech and on the fly, the original text said that this should be a campus where anybody feels safe to wear a yarmulke or a hijab. And because the Palestinian, the pro-Hamas mob there were all screaming at her, she simply said, safe to wear a hijab. Eliminated all references, and there were other references too, yes. to Jewish students feeling safe. Two or three references, she took them all out. What message does that say? Jews, you're not welcome here in the Ivy League again. This is where the Ivy League was 100 years ago, and now they're back there. Jews aren't anyway, welcome, well. and I tell you, these anti-racism policies, supposedly anti-racist, they're actually virulently racist, they're not good for Jews, they're not good for the white students, and they're not good for Asian students as well. And arguably, it's the Asian students who are most disadvantaged because despite their academic <clears throat> achievements, they're not getting entry into some of these yeah. Ivy League yeah. colleges and like the likes of Harvard because they want to boost other minority groups. The Asians are too successful, they're too good, so they want to boost the other ones. And, and there's the, the graphs on this where if you say get 90 out of 100, uh, the chances of getting entry if you're Latino or black compared to if you're white or Asian are just completely... Yeah. Uh, the, the, yeah. That, whole, yeah, that whole approach is just insane. Um, but we've got some good news here for you on Outsiders, for those men out there who've been wondering where to buy tampons for What's themselves. What? Um, men who <laughs> menstruate now have their very own... <laughs> their very own tampon supplier, Excellent. which it's about time... I was going to... I was, no, I won't say what I was about to say. No, please don't, it, it is about time that we had this, don't, don't you think? Um, so there you go. This is uh, spotting a gap in the... There's so many, so many gags I could do. Sorry, a gap in the market for... So um, fake. Sorry. Oh. Uh, so anyway, there you go. This is what the woke world is bringing us. Uh, men who menstruate now have tampons. Uh, great story there. Uh, we've also got... Would uh, there be the women... Feminine hygiene aisle, or are we, are we going to get rid of those two? That's a good point. Yeah. That's a good point. Or we will contemplate that after the break. 